Live Network. This is Sportsline. Hey there, Sportsline on your television. Steve Lambert here with you. Glad you are here with us on this Monday night on News Channel 5 Plus. We have several topics we can discuss today. We've got the Major League Baseball All-Star Game coming up tomorrow night down in South Florida. Tonight, the Home Run Derby. And discuss that here in a few minutes. Actually, already kind of an upset going on there. The new format where it's bracketed. Giancarlo Stanton, the home favorite in Miami in his own ballpark. The number one seed, the winner last year of the Home Run Derby. He was beaten by Gary Sanchez of the New York Yankees in round one. Not necessarily because Stanton struggled. He had 16 bombs. But Sanchez had 17 home runs in round one. It was an epic battle early on. It'll be interesting to see if anybody really hits that many the rest of the night. It was just such a, a clash of the titans, so to speak, in round one there. But anyway, it's Sanchez moving on and Stanton done for the night, despite being in his home ballpark there in Miami. All-star game coming up tomorrow night. It will be... A fun display of baseball's best stars. Two of them, of course, local guys. Mookie Betts of the Red Sox in the outfield for the American League for the second consecutive year. He's had another terrific season. You've got 53 RBI leading the team. 16 home runs, including a leadoff home run yesterday. That was his 11th career leadoff home run, setting a new Red Sox franchise record. So he's having a great year. One of the best defensive outfielders in all of baseball. Just an awesome story of a guy who started Overton, went into the Red Sox organization. I think a lot of people wondered where he fit. Could he be an outfielder? Where would he fit at the big league level? And he's just gotten to that level and become a complete star. And it's really fun to see, especially if you're somebody in Nashville or the mid-state that you know, grew up watching him or was around him. It's just awesome to see Mookie playing that well. And then the other guy from the mid-state in the game this year, and talk about a great story. Robbie Ray, left-handed pitcher of the Arizona Diamondbacks, who frankly has been a very average pitcher in Major League Baseball. I mean, obviously, great pedigree. He's, he's got stuff. He made it to the Major Leagues. So there's a lot to be happy about in his career. He's been a consistent Major League starter for a few years now. But it's been kind of a 500 run for him in his career until this year. And he's been able to put it all together on a very good Arizona team, by the way, that's probably going to make a run at the playoffs in the second half of the season. He's been a huge part of that. And he is in the Major League Baseball All-Star Game, one of the members of the staff of the National League that we will see tomorrow night down there in Miami. We could talk about that. We could also talk about SEC Media Days kick it off today down in Hoover. Greg Sankey, the SEC Commissioner, talking. You also had Arkansas going. Brett Bielema went today. LSU went today. And Tennessee, the Volunteers, kicking things off at SEC Media Days. Butch Jones, with a new cast of characters this year. Some people have discussed the guys he chose to take down to Hoover. I don't think that really matters all that much. But what you see here, and he said it throughout the day, is look, we're the University of Tennessee. We're Tennessee football. The expectations remain the same even when you graduate, guys. Even when guys go to the NFL. And there are a lot of holes to fill. I mean, Josh Dobbs is a Pittsburgh Steeler. Derek Barnett is with the Philadelphia Eagles. Alvin Kamara is with the New Orleans Saints. Josh Malone was drafted. Cam Sutton was drafted. There's a lot of guys who were key factors from that team a year ago in the last couple of seasons when they won nine games that are no longer there on Rocky Top. But if this program is good to go to the direction the Tennessee fans want, Tennessee still has to win games. Butch Jones has to win games. They've got to go back to a bowl game. They have to compete in the SEC East, something they were unable to do a year ago with those guys. That's the pressure on Butch Jones. And I'll give him credit today because he didn't really back away from any of that stuff. He stopped short of agreeing with any reporter who wanted to ask him if last year was a disappointment or if they failed to meet expectations. 
and talked up the fact that they're one of three teams in the SEC that's won nine games in back-to-back years. That's true. The progress that has been made from the point that he took over the program to where they are now is undeniable. They've made massive strides from the end of the Derek Dooley area to where they are here going into year five of Butch Jones. But the expectation of Tennessee is bigger than that. The expectation of Tennessee fans when they put 102,000 into Neyland Stadium every weekend is that that team's going to compete for an SEC title at least in the East Division, and that hasn't happened yet. And so now they go into year five, there's a new athletic director with John Curry. What can they do? What will the record be? Will they compete for that SEC title? A lot of rides on that for Butch Jones, I believe, this year. We'll hear more from their SEC Media Day's appearance coming up tomorrow night. Also, Vanderbilt at the SEC Media Days tomorrow, so we'll hear from them as well. Coming up tonight, we'll get to Vanderbilt quarterback Kyle Shermer, who stopped in on the Electric Power Company Sunday Sports Central last night to sit down and talk with John Burton. We'll also get into some of the Titans stuff. Counting down to training camp, just 19 days away now from them reporting and then hitting the field on Saturday, July the 29th. And we got the training camp scheduled today. They go on the field at 2.40 p.m. on that Saturday. That's the first time that you can get out and watch them, and it is open to the public. Every practice for that first week is. 13 of their training camp practices in all are through August the 17th. So lots of opportunities if you're a fan to get out there and get a glimpse of the Titans before they actually play someone in the preseason. Also a chance for you fans that can't get in to get tickets to go to Nissan Stadium. It's a chance to go out and watch this team for free in practice. Get up close to Marcus Mariota and DeMarco Murray and Brian Arakbo and Jarrell Casey and those guys. So a great opportunity. This team has been very fan friendly over the last couple of years. They'll do it again this year with 13 open practices during training camp again starting on July the 29th, July 30th as well at 240. A couple of evening practices in there for those of you who are working. Also a Saturday night, August the 5th practice slash scrimmage it's really a dress rehearsal for game day that they will hold at nissan stadium so a chance to even get in the stadium for free on that night anyway a lot of things going on we're here in the middle of summer it's it's kind of an interesting time because right here in nashville you don't have a major league team so you don't have a lot of games happening right now but we're ramping up for training camp in a few weeks. SEC Media Days is sort of the unofficial start of the college football season. Predators, free agency stuff. Nick Bedino in town last week. We'll hear from him coming up as well. What a big factor he can be for this team moving forward as they look to build off of their run to the Stanley Cup final. So a lot of different things to discuss tonight. We also have open phone line 737-7767 is our number. So feel free to call us up, join in on the conversation. Any topic you want to get into, feel free. This is your forum tonight to jump into. One other thing I want to uh, talk about, which I talked about last night on Sunday Sports Central, and that is NBA free agency. And... The just absurd contracts that we've seen over the past couple of weeks in free agency. The big one last week that got all the headlines over the weekend. James Harden of the Rockets, a four-year contract extension worth $170 million. Making his total contract, including the next two years, where he's going to get close to $59 million. You're talking about $228 million plus over six seasons to a guy. I mean, that is silly money. But I'll also say this. The NBA is not hurting for cash right now. And what's the reason for that? The players that provide the entertainment. So I've got no problem with them getting paid. And I certainly don't have a problem with James Harden getting paid. You're talking about an all-NBA guy once again. He finished second in voting for the league MVP this year behind Russell Westbrook. This is one of the preeminent players 
in the NBA. He deserves the money that he can get. But some of these other contracts, to me, illustrates the problem going on in sports right now. And I'll tell you what it is. It is the sports rights bubble era. And what I mean by that is over the last 10 or 12 years or so, as TV networks go 24-7, they expand, do all those sort of things, they have searched for live game rights and deals with leagues. And what that has done is it has driven up cost. And, and part of the reason that's happened is because all of these networks, ESPN being the chief culprit, but throw in a Fox, throw in NBC and CBS and all of us when you have to, uh, to, to really get down to it. But certainly the Fox sports angle of it and ESPN is the chief culprit. They've made so much money off of their TV carriage deals. And, and that's your local cable company. That is satellite providers, all of that. For you at home to get those channels in whatever you watch, you have to pay significantly for those channels. And that goes for everyone. You know, I watch ESPN and FS1 and all those sort of things all the time. So I don't have any beef forking over some cash to make sure that I have those channels. But does your wife watch those channels all the time? Does your grandmother watch all those channels all the time? Or your kids? Depending on who's watching, you could be paying $6 in your cable bill for ESPN and never watch it. And people are starting to figure that out. But what that meant for the longest time is that ESPN was racking up $6 on everybody's cable bill and everybody's satellite bill. And they were making tons and tons and tons of money out of this. And so when they go into these rights deals, they started throwing around the tons and tons of money and it inflated the worth of a lot of these television contracts and a lot of what these leagues are making. The NFL made $13.5 billion last year. Almost all of that is directly off of their television deals. By the way, ESPN plays something north of $2 billion themselves for one game a week in the Monday Night Football time slot. I mean, that is an absurdly bad deal for a network other than the fact that it's Monday Night Football. But why can they throw out $2 billion for one game a week? Because they were getting $6 a month from your cable subscriber and your satellite subscriber. They were making that much money. But here's the problem. Is those grandmothers and grandpas or kids or parents of kids that aren't watching this stuff, they're starting to understand that there are other options out there. People are cord cutting. They're changing up how they're paying for stuff. And what is happening, and we've seen it now over the last few years, ESPN has lost a record number of subscribers each and every month for the last two plus years. They're losing money. Not losing money as a total network at the moment, but they're no longer grossing the same revenue that they once were at the height of the cable and satellite era. It's just changing. The dynamic is changing there. And it's going to continue to change until at some point this rights bubble pops. And that's going to be very interesting because those live events are still going to matter. But is ESPN going to be able to fork over $2 billion again in their next contract to make sure they keep Monday Night Football or to try to expand their package? Will other networks continue to do that in what they're doing? We'll see. But at some point you run out of money. And when they do, I think the rights packages pull themselves back a little bit. And if that happens, what do you do as a league? How do you scale back the salaries? When James Harden's making $228 million over six years, when you're not making the same $8 billion plus that you're making as a league, 
can you scale back player salaries? It's going to be an interesting question. And it's one that I think everybody just sort of moved forward with throughout this whole deal. The, the TV company said, oh, man, we're forking, we're, we're just raking in the cash right now. And so we'll go out and spend it in any way we seem just. And then the leagues are overflowing in the cash from these deals. And so then they're paying it out to players at that rate. But what happens if it changes? And I think it's going to. Now, can they find something else? Will they find streaming to be equally valuable? All those sort of things. There could be other deals here. But in terms of the setup as we know it, something's going to change. And that's why I think if you're the NBA or even a fan of the game and how it's being managed and all that, I think these deals that you look at are worrisome. J.J. Redick for $23 million over one year. Tim Hardaway Jr. is going to make $71 million in his next four-year contract. That's more money than his dad, Tim Hardaway Sr., who, by the way, was a better NBA player than Jr. is, made in his entire career, which ended in 2004. Otto Porter who averaged 13 points and six rebounds a game for the Washington Wizards, gets a max contract offered by the Kings and the Nets, which the Wizards matched because they didn't think they could afford to lose him. $107 million over four years for Otto Porter, a guy who's 13.6 rebounds and was hurt most of the year last year. I mean, these numbers are just absolutely staggering. And it's all about this rights bubble. And if that pops, which a lot of people believe it will at some point, how will that fundamentally change the NBA, the NFL, Major League Baseball, college networks, all the money that's coming from the Big Ten Network and the SEC right now? How does that change? If all of a sudden ESPN or Fox can't pay the same money that they are, it's forking out all the cash to these networks and ultimately to the universities. Coaches' salaries, things like that. Something's going to change at some point. Will they have a plan? We'll find out. Phone lines are open. 737-7767 is the number. We want to hear from you tonight on the program. Join us up and join in on the conversation. Plus, we'll get to some Vanderbilt basketball there on the court getting set for a foreign trip. We'll get to Kyle Shermer, the Vanderbilt quarterback, as we mentioned, getting set for his trip to SEC Media Days tomorrow. Look ahead to Titans training camp. Marcus Mariota feeling healthy, ready to go, wanting to be better in year three as the Titans quarterback and Nick Bonino, the newest predator as well. Stay tuned. You're watching Sports Line, just getting started right here on News Channel 5+. Plus.